perception is the way you interpret sensation based on your experience. What does that mean? Literally, the way you, if somebody touches you, is literally your own experience is going to tell you if that touches feels good or does not feel good. If you taste something, it's your own experience is going to tell you if it tastes good or if it doesn't taste good. Does that make sense? All right, so let's keep it moving. All right, absolute threshold. I'm going to first tell you what it is and then we'll explain it. The absolute threshold is the smallest unit your stimulus needs to detect something has occurred. One more time. Absolute threshold is the smallest unit your stimulus needs to detect something has occurred. The smallest unit your stimulus needs to detect something has occurred. Does that make sense? That's your absolute threshold. Everybody's is different, but everybody has an absolute threshold. So it's just like if I put a glass of water in front of you and I put a drop of salt. The minute you taste the salt, I might have to keep putting drops, drops, drops. Everybody in this classroom is going to be different before you'll actually taste the salt. That's your absolute threshold for taste. Does that make sense? Same with volume or hearing. If I turn up music, the minute that you hear it, that's your absolute threshold. It's the smallest unit you need for your ears to detect sound is occurring. Everybody's different. Is this making sense? Yes? Good. All right. So let's move. Keep moving. Now, inside of your absolute threshold, you have what's called a difference threshold. It goes by three different names. So you're here called three different names. You're here called Weber's Law, Difference Threshold, or Just Noticeable Difference. Same concept, three names. Weber's Law, Difference Threshold, Just Noticeable Difference. Weber's Law, Difference Threshold, Just Noticeable Difference. Now, I'm going to tell you the riddle, you write it down, and then we'll go through the explanation. Difference threshold says that there must be at least a 50% change of your absolute threshold for you to notice a difference. There must be at least a 50% change of your absolute threshold for you to notice a difference. There must be at least a 50% change in your absolute threshold for you to notice a difference. What does that mean? to make sure you recognize I either turned it down or turned it up, I must change it at least 50% of what your absolute threshold was. Tasting food. Say you cook food for someone and they say, could you add some salt? And you just put a dab of salt in it. Until you reach 50% of their absolute threshold, they will not notice you put salt into the product. Does that make sense? Your grandmother says, turn the TV up. You turn it up and to you it's loud enough because you've reached 50% of your absolute threshold, but you have not reached 50% of her absolute threshold. For her to notice a difference, you have to change at least 50% of her absolute threshold. Does everybody get that? Okay. You keep saying yes, I'm gonna keep moving. All right, stimulus or signal detection theory. How many of you back in kindergarten, first grade, took that hearing test? Okay. You know, in a beat and you raise your hand, this is what's the signal detection theory. The basis literally says is that you can detect a signal in the midst of other noises. It's, literally, it's trying to identify your absolute threshold for hearing. You can detect a signal in the midst of other noises.
inside of the signal detection theory, it actually saw that there are other characteristics that can affect your ability to pick up stimulus. Does this make sense? So let's first say, how many of you watch TV? How many of you watch reality TV? Mostly, a lot of stuff on TV is reality TV, whether you want to consider it is or not, it's reality TV. Most, 90% of shows right now are reality TV. Okay, so if you're watching TV, you probably watch some type of reality TV. So when you're watching your favorite show and somebody starts to talk to you, how much do you hear what they are saying versus what is on the TV? Okay, so literally your motivation to whichever one detects what you actually process. Okay, and then somebody later say, I told you that, when did you tell me? When you were watching TV. Oh, okay. How many times do people say, can I talk to you? And why you're like, uh-huh, uh-huh, oh, uh-huh, uh-huh. So what do you think about it? I don't, I don't even know what to think about that. I mean, let's go over it one more time. What did you actually feel? Like you're trying to figure out because what happens is you didn't pick it up because your motivation wasn't there. Okay, even in regards to learning things, when you walk into a classroom, if you say, this is the hardest class I ever took, everything we learn in this class, guess what it's gonna be? Hard, because you can't hear anything over the mind thing that's going, this is hard, this is hard, this is hard, this is hard, this is hard. So everything I say, if I just said, oh, your next test, it'll say two plus two is four. I can say that, you would not hear anything I said, because when you open that test, you'll be like, oh my God, this is gonna be a hard test. You open up, it'll say two plus two is four, you'll be like, this is a trick. There's no way this woman just put this on here. So now I gotta figure out, when she says two, what is she representing in the two? Is this two, me and her? Two, two people in the household? You will go through this whole thing because your mind is already telling you it's hard so you wouldn't hear, pick up signal. Does that make sense? Okay, good. Um, keep it moving. Sensory adaptation. Now, in sensory adaptation, all of your senses work, we hope. Whose senses here do not work? Okay, you don't have to raise, raise the high just so I'll know. Okay. Now, inside of your senses, there's sometimes your senses don't work, okay? They don't work because either they go through different type of things. So we'll talk about sensitization. Literally, this is the process to where you become sensitive to a stimulus. Perfect example, if you ever get um, sick and somebody's touching you, you got the flu, and somebody's touching you. What does that feel like? All they're doing is just lightly touching you. You're just kind of like, would you please just move? They're not even doing much, but at this point in time, because of your situation, your senses have actually became more sensitive. Does that make sense? Hangovers. Never experienced one, but I always laugh when people have one, and then you're like yelling, you're just saying hello, and they're like, do you have to holler? And you're like, <laughs> all I said was hello. There you go again. It's because of the situation has called the senses to increase. Pregnancy, they say, is another one. During pregnancy, some senses start to increase. It becomes really sensitive. Right. So this one is really, they're just so sensitive at this point. Um, I know sometimes they say when one sense starts to disappear, another one starts to heighten at time. So sometimes if you can't see as well, you got blurry vision for some reason, you all of a sudden can hear better than ever before during that period of time. That's what this would be. Does that make sense? All right, desensitization is the negative side. This is when the senses starts to detect, deteriorate and not pick up senses as well as they used to. Desensitization is when your senses start to deteriorate, decrease, decline, and you do not pick up the senses as you used to. If you work in a factory, you work in a hospital, you work in a bakery, um, you do anything around something that smells, garbage, sanitation engineer is what we call them, not the garbage man, sanitation engineer. After so long, their senses no longer picks up the stimulus. How many of you ever worked in a hospital or work in a hospital? 
Nobody. Bakery? Okay. Hospitals stink. They smell like sick people. This is what it smells like. I don't know how you could, it's just sick people were like death. It's just, it doesn't smell really good. So you walk in the hospital and you ask the nurse, it, it might be, because this just smells death-like. Yeah. Walk, next time you walk in there, just take a, like that, and it just smells, I don't know. Ask the nurse, what's that smell, and what do you think she'll say? What smell? What smell are you talking about? There is no smell here. Okay. McDonald's. Ever work at McDonald's for so long? McDonald's no longer has a smell to you. You come home every day and people are like, please change your clothes. And you're like, what is it? It's the smell, but because you now desensitized to it, you don't smell it. You just get used to it. Every person in this room is their house. Your house has a smell, but you have now become desensitized. And when you walk in, you don't smell it. But when people walk in, they're like, what is that smell? You're like, what smell are you talking about? It smells kind of, um, you're like, I don't know. Because you're there, okay? You desensitize to that stimulus. <laughs> um, people say the chicken plant doesn't smell good. Never been there. Is it bad? People say when you ride by it, it smells bad. Okay, well, because I never rode by it. Um, in my head, the chickens never went to the plant. It was, yeah. The thing is, though, people that work there, you don't smell it as strong as when you first started. Yeah. 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 They don't smell it as much anymore because to them, my brother works as a mechanic, and every time he comes home, he smells like literally like car fuel something. And I'm like, what is that smell? And he's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, it's on your, it must be in your pores or something. Cigarette smokers, another per great idea. They walk, you, they don't smell the cigarette smoke, but when they come in from a cigarette break, you're like, did you just go out of smoke? How do you know? It's, oh, you smell it. But because they just sensitize, they no longer pick it up. Make sense? You also do this when you wear a watch. When you first put the watch on, your skin picks it up. As the day goes about, you desensitize to it. You no longer feel the sensation. Now, because you wear a watch all the time, you don't feel it. If you don't wear the watch for a couple of days, all of a sudden when you put it on, you'll kind of be like, ooh. What? Wedding bands. When a person first gets married, you'll watch. Watch how they turn it. Because at first it's kind of like, this thing is on my finger, and it feels a little uncomfortable. After a few months, don't even realize they don't have it on. Everything, everything, you've all been desensitized to something. It's just the way you do things, okay? A little bit different than what we call adaptation. You want to write that one down. This is sensitization, desensitization, but you also have adaptation. Adaptation, the word is up there. Adaptation is when the senses adapt to your surroundings for a brief moment. Your senses adapt to your surroundings for a brief moment. Adaptation. Your senses adapt to your surroundings for a brief moment. Senses adapt to your surroundings for a brief moment. Adaptation. Only for a brief moment, which really means when you walk out and you come back in, I'll use an example. Everyone in here has their bathroom moment where you're in there for a little while. Hopefully you have one at least once a week. And you first start, and what does it smell like? It is not roses. What does it smell like? Be honest. Like something has died in Sunday inside of you. Okay. You've been in here about 10 minutes. Now what does it smell like? You probably didn't. You just in there relaxing. You didn't got involved in the article. <laughs> what does it smell like now? You don't even smell it, do you? Because it's adaptation. You've just adapted to that smell. But yet, when you go downstairs and come back up in the bathroom, you're like, oh my gosh, I am messed up inside. That's adaptation. It's just a temporary break of the stimulus while you're in the surroundings. But you can still smell it. Make sense? Compared to this one, it's kind of like gone. Okay? Good. 
All right, so now let's break down these senses. We're going to start with your vision. All right, vision is first. When we look at vision, we're going to look, light is the way we see things. We see things based on light. Okay. When we look at it, we're looking at what is called a wavelength. Light is based on a wavelength that allows our eyes to see. Light is based on a wavelength that allows our eyes to see. When we look at the eye, we're actually going to break it down into different parts. The first part, the first part of the eye that picks up light is the cornea. It is the part that transparent that protects the eye. The first part of the eye that picks up light is the cornea. It is the part that protects the eye. Uh, which part you got? First part of the eye that picks up light that protects the eye. Next, you have the iris. The iris actually is a muscle that contracts. This muscle contracts to allow the amount of light into the eye. The iris is a muscle that contracts that decides the amount of light that is let into the eye. It is the color part of your eye. The color part of your eye is actually a muscle. You then have the pupil, which is the small dot inside the iris. This opens and dilates in an effort to let more and less light inside the eye. The pupil is the, op the little dot inside the iris. It opens and dilates to allow less and more light into the eye. The pupil is also connected to emotions. to allow more or less light. Mm -hmm. Sad, happy, say it again. Depends on the person. The anger would probably open um, compared to, well, some people, because some people get angry and it'll dilate smaller to where they, when they start to see the blackout moments. It's really because the, the pupil is dilated to a point to where it's not letting too much light in. And so some people, like, you'll see them when they get angry, they're kind of just like, it's almost that um, shock. And then you see some that's kind of like squint because they can't see as much because the pupil has started dilating compared to the emotion. Okay. You can actually, when people always say eyes are the windows to the soul, you could really tell a person how they feel by looking at their eyes. If you can pay attention to their pupil, you can be able to tell if they're really upset, not upset, how they're feeling. That's why people usually, when they're upset, they'll look away from you. Because if you look into their eyes, you can tell the truth. Looking in your eye. Your eyes will also tell if you're lying. The minute you lie or tell the truth, the people will dilate accordingly. So you'd have to watch a person for a while to see when they lie, does, their, does the people dilate or does it open? Once you master their response, when they're lying, just look in their eyes and you'll know. Also, the, every person in this room, when they lie, they do something. It's just the automatic response the body does to show their lying. Once you master a person, you can kind of see it until they learn to master themselves. But eventually, the face will still tell. Um, we, it was a series on ABC for a long time called Liar. And they literally just watched how there's so many things your body does to show you're lying that people don't realize you do. So people think, I'm a great liar. Unfortunately, if a person studied you long enough, they would know what you did to show the lie. Just take a long time to study. Okay, so we've gone in, let's go inside the eye. Inside the eye, we have what's called the retina. Okay, the retina actually contains cones and rods. Cones allow you to see color. Rods allow light. So inside the retina, you have cones and rods, and you also have in the center of the retina, the fovea. Color. So 
So let's just say right now we're getting dressed in the dark. All of our socks are in a drawer and they're not paired together. What's the chances you're coming out with mismatch socks? Pretty good. The reason why? Rods have restrict all light. Therefore, without light, cones can't pick up the color. So everything has that dark color because until the rods come open, you can't see it. What happens if I turn the lights off and then turn the lights back on real quick? What do you do? Let's just say in the middle of the night, you just woke up accidentally, it's three o'clock in the morning, and somebody flicks the lights on. What do you do? Cover, why are you covering your eyes? Because they hurt. Rods just went into shock. Too much light, too fast. And it gives you those dots. Light. Let you see light. Okay? Pupils can't even dilate to literally say, less light, more light. It's literally shock. All the light in. And the rods literally go into overload to where they kind of like, ooh, stop. And you're like, turn it off, turn it off, turn it off. Because your rods have to have time to adjust. Because what's going to dilate? First of all, those pupils are going to come around. Once I see those pupils, I know what's going on. I know what's going on. I don't have to even give you a sobriety test. So all I got to do is take that light. And then pupils is going to tell a whole lot. <laughs> because if you don't have any movement, or we might literally say it might not be so much brain function, there might be nerve damage. So we need to first decide, first, is it nerve damage to where Because if you're responding and you're not dilating, I know it's nerve damage. If you're gone and you're not doing anything, So we've got all this information. It then hits what is called the optic nerve. The phobia is just the center of the retina. It kind of takes away, it kind of like does its light. Everything in this eye is just all about light. And what it's doing is it's picking up light, but the brain doesn't understand light. Okay? So when it hits the optic nerve, it performs what is called transduction. Now, you learned something in chapter two. There's a part of the brain that's responsible for taking your census information so that the brain can understand it. What's that part called? It's called who? Ooh. Takes the census information. You close. Oh, jeez. The thalamus actually performs transduction from the optic nerve. Okay? So we're going to learn this again. Every time it's an optic nerve, olfactory nerve, all of these nerves actually perform transduction. It transforms information so that the brain can use it. And it's, what, it's the thalamus' job to do that. So let's go through the eye. We went through the whole eye. We came in. We had all this stuff done. Information hits the optic nerve, transduction occurs, the thalamus performs it, the brain gets it, and then the brain can transform and say what we just actually saw. But technically, all the eye picked up was light. Sound waves. Make sense? I know it doesn't make sense, but that's how it works. Okay? <laughs> now, this was the stimulus. This part, when it gets here, that's perception. Make sense? This was a stimulus. This was perception. Got it? So let's try this. What's the eye picking up? What kind of book? What else is it? Some people use psychology books, some people say black books. What else are you picking up? Squares. Okay. Anything else? Okay. 
So all of you got the sensation part. Now, if somebody said, what is this? Perception is telling you it's a what? What kind of book? What do you think is inside of it? What kind of information? Like what? What'd you say, Yogi? Like stuff like right now, like? What's in this book? <laughs> Beyond that. Are you still telling me sensation stuff? Perception, what's in this book? Like what? Like? Ah, so sensation and perception's in this book? What else is in this book? What else is in this book? Why should your definition, your description, why should, okay, there's a third grader sitting next to you. And I'm going to ask this third grader, what's in this book? What's the third grader going to tell me? Your hand, some pages, some words, an index, what you just told me. Now, as psychology students, what's in this book? On what? Like what? Oh, okay. Oh, what else? Oh. Oh, okay, what else? Oh, okay, what else? Oh, is it really? What else? Okay, go ahead. Bring out your perception. Oh, is it really? Now, why is your perception different than a third grader's perception? So it's based on your what? Knowledge and your experience is based on this third grader. Oh, everybody picked up the same thing, but your perception was different based on your experience and your knowledge. Does that make sense? Driving, because y'all just really just, just went over your head. Everybody here drive? Third graders should not drive. Do we all agree? So third grader sees a car accident, you see a car accident. What is the third grader going to say happen? A car accident. What are you going to say to happen? You're probably going to go a little bit more detailed. It appears that somebody did not stop when they crossed that stop sign. They just ran right into them, blah, blah, blah. But the third grader just said, it was a car accident. Well, what happened? Two cars hit each other. Yep. You said that stop sign was there. That person did not stop at that stop sign. They ran that red light. Why are you able to give a different? You saw the same thing, but your perception changed. Everybody picked up the same light because of your experience. That makes sense. Got it? Totally different. Um, with the music, for example, we can all hear the same song. Some people are going to say, that was the best song I have ever heard. And then some of y'all are going to think, what in the world is that? <laughs> okay, yeah, it's some songs that I literally sit there and think, people listen to this on a daily basis. And like, they really like putting it up in the car loud. Okay, literally because the sound is the same, but our perception is different. Example, got it? Sound is the same, perception is different. We all pick up the same scent, but we actually perceive it differently. Okay, we just talked about the optic nerve. There's the little eye thing going on. You see the iris, the pupil, the lens, the cornea, the retina, the fovea, the optic nerve. We got all of that. Good? Done. The so eye, rod, cone, see what? Color, rod, stick, pick up. All right, good. Uh, nope, keep it moving. Dark adaptation. You need to understand these two concepts. 
cones reach maximum adaptation in about 10 minutes. Rods do not adapt fully for 45 minutes. This is why sometimes when you turn off the light, can you still see? You see shadows, you can pretty much move your, how many of you can go to the bathroom without turning on the light? I hope so. Okay. That's all you really need to know about that part. Cones of, and 45. And it's really what you're saying is light, ad light adaptation. You actually adapt to these things within this time. Um, and they also, their senses are usually heightened with the event, with especially sound. They hear things better than a person. Um, I know there was a movie, if you ever see the Ray Charles movie, he, and being blind, he'll always say, do you hear the bird outside the window? And she's like, no, what bird? Because to her, we go back to signal, the signal detection theory, everything in her life is, is louder than that sound of that bird. But because he can't see, he hears every sound around him and perceives it totally different. Usually other senses become more heightened for your safety. So let's just use an animal for instance. An animal's senses are usually heightened based on their safety. Um, a dog takes in the world literally by sniffing. And you can put, a dog can see the food in front of them, but until they sniff it, smell it, sometimes they'll even roll in it. And you're like, seriously, why are you rolling in your dog food? Because the smell to them is more important, and sometimes the smell takes away their sense to where if something was in danger, it would take away the sense of them. So if a car accident happens to us, we might sometimes go blind, but we'll start to hear a whole lot better because that's what's going to protect us. Yeah. You could do it any way you, I mean, you could teach yourself that. Yeah. Yeah. You could literally teach yourself all your senses. Um, there's a, there used to be an experiment down in downtown Atlanta um, called um, walking in the dark to where they would literally take away all light and senses so they put you in a room and you had to go through your life without sight. So you had to go pay bills, you had to go grocery shopping, you had to walk across the street and they'll make these sounds of cars. Yeah, it was part of the body experiment. And literally you go through the whole, I mean, you hear people in there screaming, like crying because they were just like, let me out, let me out, let me out. Um, you would be standing there trying to figure out is this a really a car coming or should I like cross? And you like trying to feel on your face to see, can I feel the sense of this air? And you literally became so aware of surroundings, like you'd be like somebody standing next to me because you literally, they took away your sight and that was just for minutes. One of the best experiments ever. And paying your bills was like really hard because the person would be like, that's $25 and they give you this fake money, you gotta decide what was $25. So when they gave it to you, you had sight. So if you didn't put it in a way that you can figure out, where things were, you might pay more than what you were supposed to. And they wouldn't tell you, they'd just take your money. And the thing was to come out with the amount of money you're supposed to come out after you've done all of the acts. Yes. Or they'll just say, just all singles, so I can count it out. Or literally they'll fold ones for fives. Everything has a different fold, a different place, just so we can make sure we don't get cheated. But it was one of the best experiments that I wish people would go to. Uh, they took it away. Hopefully it'll come back one time, but it was, I mean, to hear people when they're crying and one lady was just like, I just, I want my sight back. I want my sight back. And it was just like, technically you just walk through the door and get your sight back. But to imagine those people who can never do that was like, you had an appreciation for just little things. These three things, this is all I want you to know is the definition. You know, the definition of hue, value, and saturation. This is the dimensions of color. Okay, no hue, value, and saturation, the dimensions of color. Hue, value, and saturation, the dimensions of color. No more. Yeah. No. Each one has their own definition. <laughs> um, don't worry about the color wheel. Don't worry about it. All right.
everybody stare at the dot for a little while. What happens? You see the stripe. Some of you should see the stripe. What it is called is literally the after image. What happens is the persistent sensation actually allows the perception to continue. Okay? The, persi the persistent sensation allows the perception to continue. After image. Uh -huh. Persistent sensation allows the perception to continue. Persistent sensation allows the perception to continue. <laughs> it's even worked sometimes in after image is really only for the light, but you can even see this demonstrated in a lot of your other senses. After you hear something for so long, ever hear music for a long time and then you walk away from it and it's like you still hear the sound and you just kind of like, oh my gosh. Or if somebody keeps, if you've got something on you and the minute you take it off, for a little while you just kind of like, trying to get the feeling back because that it, all those things women with bras you know when you first take it off you just kind of like whoo oh whoo <laughs> okay another one let's do sailboat um roller skates um roller coaster ride all those things walk uh treadmill ever get off the treadmill you still feel like you kind of like you like oh i'm not i'm not it's literally, it's after image is only for the eye, but when you have a constant or persistent sensation, you still feel the sensation for a while. Got it? All right, good. You guys are doing good. Now, triomatic opponent. We're starting to get theories again. So in this theory, this is literally the theory of how we see color. There's two theories on how we see color. Two theories on how we see color. The first one is called the triomatic theory. What's the key word in triomatic? Tri, which means what? Three. The triomatic theory literally says we only see three colors, red, green, and blue. We only see three colors, red, green, and blue. The triomatic theory says that the cones pick up red, green, and blue, and the rods filter in different sets of light to allow us to see different colors. We only see red, green, and blue. The rods filter in different sets of light for us to see different colors. Like say we got we pick up red, the rods put in more light. What color was that red gonna become? Pink, bright red. So literally we not we're only seeing red, but because the rods are filtering in more light, we're picking up different colors. But the idea is that you don't see pink, you actually just see red. But the rods are dictating how much light is picked up. More, more or less light to allow us to see a variation in color. Got the, everybody understand triomatic theory? Pretty simple theory. The opponent process theory, what is an opponent? Again, literally this theory literally says that we play off colors that are against each other to actually burst new color. We play colors off of each other in an effort to see new color. We play colors off of each other in an effort to see new color. We play colors off of each other in an effort to see new color. This the opponent process theory goes back to, remember in kindergarten, yellow and blue make what? Green. It's that concept. That we're actually taking colors and playing them off of each other in an effort to see new color. Good? Yes? No? Good question. Both of them, they, both of them have been proven. Because they were both proven, they both <laughs> published. Because they both published, you have to learn both. And unfortunately, in psychology, you're gonna find that all, oh, quite a bit of time. Um, it's gonna be the exact same process, like personality. When we get to the personality chapter, personality is the content. I think five people studied it and proved it. You gotta learn all five. 
It's just kind of you believe in what you believe. Okay, got it? Color blindness, don't worry about it. Visual perception. We're going to go over this and we're going to, what time is it? Yep, we're going to stop at visual perception. Now, visual perception is the way you organize sensory impressions. The way you organize sensory impressions. What is sensory impressions? It's literally what you gather from your senses. Your impression of what you gather from your senses. Okay? Now, when we go into this whole idea of perceptual organization, keep moving. Mm -hmm. Remember back in chapter one, you learned something called just thought. What was just thought all about? <laughs> yeah. What was his theory? He had a slogan. Hmm. Mm. Mm. There we go. The whole is greater than the parts of the sum. Perfect, which really means we look at the big picture, not the little parts. Remember that? Remember? Okay, did I take y'all out to the car to look at the car? I didn't take y'all out? Oh, maybe that's all, yeah. No field trip? No, it was just mental field trip. So let's take a mental field trip so you can understand this just thought principle. You're outside looking at a car, and I say, go outside, look at the cars, and tell me what you see. What are you going to tell me you see? Cars. Yep, that's what you're going to tell me. And I'm going to send you back out. Go back out and tell me what you see. What else? What else? Trees. You don't see a tree. What do you see? We got some windshield wipers, some windshields. What else you see? Rear view mirror, side mirrors. What else do you see? No. Birds. You don't see birds. What do you really see? Beaks, wings. When you looked at the tree, what did you really see? Leaves, branches, trunk. That's what you saw, but what did you come back and tell me? It's some trees, some leaves, it's some trees, some birds, and some cars out there. You gave me the big picture because you don't want to pair apart to those little pieces. Does that make sense? People tell you, how was your day? You say what? Good? It's all right. How was your day? Horrible. Your whole day was horrible? No. It was probably a piece of it, but you said, it's easy just to say, all of it was horrible. I think I told you about the diet. You messed up one time throughout the day. Oh, I messed up. That's just thought's principle. You look at the big picture. So in this, we actually have perception, organization, and just thought. The first one is proximity. We look at things based on how close they are to each other. Proximity. We look at things based on how close they are to each other. We look at things based on how close they are to each other. Does that make sense? You just see things close and you're like, oh, that's a so-and-so, group of so-and-so based on how close they are to each other. Perfect example would be teenagers outside of a store. If they are standing close to each other, we associate them together. There's a group of kids outside that store. They don't even know each other. But because they were close, their proximity put them together. Does that make sense? Got it? Good. Do we? That's the, we don't have to, but the part you said right there, we don't want to spend all that time saying there was one, one child, Caucasian, 5'5", five, five, standing to the left of the door. Next to him, about three inches away, Caucasian, 5'7". We don't want to say, we just, it's a group of kids outside, okay? Because we don't want, perfect example, we don't want to take the time. So literally when somebody says, how was your day? It's so much easier to say, good, okay, fine. Because if we really had to go through the eight hour day, it would probably take you eight hours to literally say, well, when I got to work, we had this thing due, I had her able to go find all of the pieces. How was it? Horrible. But well, what did you do all day? Reports. 
What kind of report? A whole lot of them. Didn't take your whole day, most of it. It's like, don't make me go into all these pieces. It's easier for us just to just start had a point, group it together and be done with it. It's a whole lot easier. Does that make sense? When people say, we also do what's called similarity. We group things based on the similar factors. The grocery store does a great job at this. They will never put the apples on this part of the grocery store, the oranges on that part of the grocery store, bananas in the back of the grocery store. What else they put in there? Peaches in the front of the grocery store. Why are they not going to do that? It's just all, it's produce. Where is it at? Over there. When you say, can you tell me where the apples are? In the produce section. I didn't ask where the produce was. I said, where's the apple? But we're going to group it based on similarities. It's over there. Where can I find ice cream? In the frozen food department. I didn't ask you for frozen food. I asked for ice cream. Similarity. Does that make sense? Everybody got it? Good. Continuity. Continuity says that we actually continue a pattern of unity. We continue patterns to perform unity. We try not to break a pattern. We do this in life. You try not to break a pattern. First question I'm going to ask you, who brushes their teeth before the shower? Who brushes your teeth before you get in the shower? Okay, who brushes people, brush your teeth after the shower? Who brushes their teeth in the shower? Okay, why do you do this? Saves time. Brushing your teeth is brushing your teeth, whether it's before, after, or during. <laughs> so you really didn't save time. Why do you do it? Lazy? Okay. Time method? Okay. We patterns to perform unity. So why do you guys brush your teeth at the time you brush them? This one you want to brush them? So if you brush them after you took the shower, before the shower, what's wrong? If you are a before the shower person and you broke, you did it afterward, what happens? You probably like, oh my God, my teeth just doesn't feel as clean as if I had did them before I got in the shower. Okay, it's the same brushing before the shower and after the shower. And you should have saw how many people would just shake their hair like, uh-huh. You just feel, I'm a person with washing my face. It just feels better for me to wash my face after the shower. Even though I wash my face in the shower, I just need to wash it after the shower to make sure I fully get all oils off. If I forget the whole day, I'd be like, dang, my hair, oh, hair probably just shiny the whole day. I ain't get to wash my, my face. It's literally, you try to continue because you've got a pattern. All of you have a pattern. When you first walk in the house, there's something you do to perform something to create this unity. Does that make sense? <laughs> you always want to fight it, but for some reason it just doesn't work. And the last thing we know is closure. We are good for closing in things that do not belong. We fill in the blank. Even when you tell a dream, you fill in the blank. When you tell a story, you fill in the blank. Continuity is w closure is when you actually fill in the blank in an effort to understand. You fill in the blank in an effort to understand. It also happens in life, in relationships. What's the one thing, the breakup has happened, and what do you want to get? Closure. What are you trying to obtain? I just need to fill in the blanks. I need to know why it happened. What did I tell you guys? You fill in the blank in an effort to understand. And people always say it's the greatest thing that people have to have. I just needed closure. I needed to hear them tell me why. For what? <laughs> I just needed something to understand why it happened. He put my clothes outside. It was closure. I knew it was the end. As long as he had my clothes, it was a possibility. Closure. Everybody got them? Good. We're going to stop here.